Hi, we are going to talk about engaging students during the COVID-19 health crisis. Um, and there'll be three of us talking about this. I'm Laura Lay and I'm a lecturer at the University of Minnesota. Hi, I'm Carrie Locke Morgan and I'm an assistant professor of statistics at Penn State University. And I'm Lucy D'Agostino McGowan. I am an assistant professor of statistics at Wake Forest University. Um, so this topic is something that the three of us talked about at a panel at uh, ECOTS, the Electronic Conference on Teaching Statistics, uh, this past year. Um, and so it's a portion of, of, that, of that longer panel um, that we hope will be useful. So to start off with, uh, we put together some resources here. If you go to this link, bit.ly slash coronavirus teaching resources, you can find those. Uh, and that kind of just gives some uh, additional pieces that sort of follow what, we, what we'll talk about today and also has some additional things like data sets and things like that that might be useful for folks interested in teaching on topics related to COVID-19. Okay, so when thinking about uh, kind of teaching uh, in the in the presence of something like a pandemic or teaching uh, about sensitive data in general, uh, the first question that I think a lot of us as educators ask ask ourselves is, should we do it? Is it worth kind of incorporating this in the classroom? And so um, when I think about this, I, you know, when I first was thinking about it last year, I came across this article in the New York Times that said, uh, what historians will see when they look back on the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020. And it was basically talking about how universities and institutions were inviting people from the public to share their experiences during this, uh, the pandemic and its aftermath. And basically the, the, the big picture here is that this is a historic event. And so sort of, um, it, even if you don't talk about it in the classroom, it's gonna be something that is present, you know, probably for several years to come in people's minds. And so I think just from that perspective, there might be, it's worthwhile to sort of potentially address, especially for uh, disciplines that are kind of biomedical adjacent. But then the next thing that came to mind when I was thinking about this is sort of the idea um, of when you're on an airplane that you want to put your mask on first before you, uh, before you help somebody else for an oxygen mask. And sort of the idea here is just that um, before talking about something like COVID-19 or any kind of sensitive topic in the classroom, it's important to sort of check in with yourself on how you're feeling about the uh, kind of the, the data or whatever it is that you're going to be presenting and make sure that you're in a place that feels um, that, that you feel prepared to do so. So kind of, you know, I know, like, especially early on, there were a lot of people who were sort of were had direct um, impact on this. And if you're among those people, it's important to sort of make sure that you're going to be in a good place to be able to talk about it with your students before you actually go ahead and talk about it. So sort of that principle of putting on your oxygen mask first. And then the next piece when thinking about this is sort of, you know, it's easy to be able to have students give feedback. So, um, you know, when I was thinking about incorporating some data from this, you know, it's easy to just poll your students and say, you know, at the beginning of the semester, it, it, is this a topic that you'd be interested in? Um, from my personal experience, I think students are deaf, were interested in this topic because it was so ubiquitous. And I think that's going to be the case for quite some time, um, that people are going to be interested in kind of understanding it better. And it is a very compelling example that they lived through. And so, um, but, but just to kind of to make sure that that's how your students feel, you can always just ask them. And then the final piece is just having kind of an alert somewhere, potentially in a syllabus or uh, kind of as you get approach a day where this is going to be a topic, just letting students know in advance so that if they feel like they might not be prepared emotionally um, to talk about this that particular day, they'll sort of have some, uh, they'll have some warning that that's coming. So that's kind of the should we, I think personally, my, my opinion, the overall answer to should we is generally yes, but kind of with caveats to take things into account, like your own personal well-being and also your students um, and, and doing things like adding alerts and stuff to make sure that they're aware. So if we, if we assume that yes, we should, then the next question, uh, the next natural question is how to do that. And so there was this great article um, in uh, the American Journal of Public Health that said uh, teaching public health will never be the same. And essentially this went through uh, basically how it, it's important to sort of address real uh, issues and the, the like, equity issues and other types of issues um, fa at, like face value to actually bring them up in the classroom and uh, that, that we wanna actually be honest about these things and not sort of skirt around them. 
And so a line from this was that our pedagogy must be trauma informed. And there are, a, you know, there are a lot of resources out there, some of which we link to in our resource link that I gave at the beginning about thinking about doing kind of trauma informed pedagogy. Um, and, and I think that this is a great opportunity to learn a little bit about some of those resources to be able to incorporate the proper methods in our classrooms. And so the next piece kind of in addition to being aware of how to bring up sensitive topics is what type of data should you use? So if you're in a data-driven class, um, thinking really carefully about the data that you bring into the classroom. Uh, for example, I had spoken with folks that, that were running uh, the American Statistical Association Data Fest uh, in, in 2020, which did have coronavirus related data. And these are some of the things that sort of we discussed when thinking about what type of data to use. So um, in the early days, a lot of folks were focusing on forecasting. Uh, and this is a really hard problem. It's hard for experts, um, as we now know, being kind of a year into this, that it, it was a very challenging problem to be able to accurately forecast how a brand new, a novel infectious disease is going to kind of progress um, in terms of cases and, and things like that. Um, but it's also obviously very challenging for people that don't have that kind of background knowledge. And so the suggestion that, that we came up with is consider addressing other questions in the classroom aside from just forecasting, even though a lot of times that was the kind of front of mind question that people thought of when they thought of data. And so for ASA Data Fest, uh, they explored the societal impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic um, other than its direct health out outcomes. So they looked at things like pollution levels, transportation levels, working from home. And I think this is a really good example of what you can do where you can incorporate this kind of data, but not actually um, need to be doing something that's going to be really challenging for students to be able to do without the content matter expertise. And then finally, um, I want to just mention this. Uh, Amanda wrote this 10 considerations before you uh, create another chart about COVID-19. And I just want to give this a shout out as a, a place to, to, if you want to look at this article, it gives some really good uh, tips on basically um, what she calls viz responsibly. And so basically using kind of responsible visualization techniques um, to, to be able to look at this type of data. And it kind of falls under the same umbrella as the data fest kind of uh, questions that we were looking at as to what type of data you're actually giving, handing students and what tools they've been given in advance to be able to actually do well with that. All right, so I'm going to talk about this question of um, engaging students um, with COVID-19. And so I, like many of you, particularly last spring, um, were I, I felt desperate for any, any and all information I can get um, re related to COVID-19. And so my natural instinct um, back in actually a year ago now um, was to email ISOSTAT asking for COVID-19 data sets. This is just a listserv, but I wanted data sets to bring into the classroom and share with my students. Just, I guess, perhaps a little bit too naively assuming that students were like me, um, really desperate for information. And the immediate reaction I got was that students may not want this. And of course, in hindsight, that's obvious. Students have been very, very personally affected by this. Um, but it was something that I was a little bit too excited and maybe couldn't see this immediately. So the first point, um, Lucy already mentioned that students may not want this, but the more general point here is that there really is value in discussing with your colleagues. If you have an idea, if you're excited about doing something in the classroom, for me, at least it was very helpful to run it by someone else and, and get that kind of more rational feedback that, that we, I shouldn't just jump right into this. So I learned from this discussion, and after just thinking for a second, we shouldn't assume that all students want to talk about it. This is this was, and even more so now, is a very sensitive topic. Many students have, have suffered really real extreme loss um, from COVID-19. However, we also shouldn't assume that students don't want to talk about it. This is something that's very real and very relevant in all of our lives right now, and has been for the past year. And I think it would be a missed opportunity if we just ignored that fact and left it out of our classes entirely. So we have this opportunity to really engage students with something that means a lot to them, but we also don't wanna force it upon students um, for whom it's too uncomfortable to talk about. So we shouldn't assume, but we're all statisticians, we're good at collecting data, so, so we can just ask them. And so that's what I did with my students and that's what I would recommend any of us do if we want to bring this into the classroom. So this was a poll that I gave um, actually a year ago now. Would you like to look at COVID-19 from a statistical perspective in this class? Um, I got the answers that I got in my class were 
everybody wanted to look at it. It was kind of split between whether they wanted to look at it enough to detour from the planned topics. Um, but this to me signaled that it was okay for me to go ahead and bring this into the class. Um, which I did do. However, these are my students. Please do not generalize to your students. This was also a year ago. Many more students have um, suffered loss due to this in the, um, in the year since. So I think it's important to ask and also to tell your students that they can change their answer and let you know at any time if, if they become uncomfortable. Really, if anyone had chosen the no answer, um, I, would have, I would have not used it as a lecture topic. Um, however, I did use it. And um, I'm going to jump over to this video here. I don't have questions, but I definitely, I think, enjoyed going through the study in such detail, even though it's, it's not uh, a fun topic, uh, obviously. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice to sort of switch off the worrying side and at least just, you know, sort of turn on the stat side, which is what we're all here for. So I just wanted to, to end with that and say, yes, it is a sensitive topic, but this is the only time in my teaching career where a student has actually said live, thank you for talking about this. I appreciate it. Um, and I think we, we have to seize that opportunity when we can and talk about what they want to hear about. Okay, we will close that and... Okay, I am last on the list. Um, so here at the University of Minnesota, we've been talking a little bit or for a couple of years now and actually how do we bring sensitive topics into the classroom? And it all stemmed from this educational talk that we had or a seminar on facilitating difficult or challenging conversations in the classroom. And, and from that talk, we came um, up with an idea for creating modules for how we approach data with one of them being titled Coping with Sensitive Data. And so I should um, give acknowledgement to who kind of came up with these tips to Ann Brearley. She's one of my colleagues at University of Minnesota. Um, but the first tip that uh, we have in this module is that acknowledge that the topic is sensitive. So, you know, you recognize as an instructor that you may present data that has high emotional content for students. And you may be used to monitoring your own emotions in your work, but you should acknowledge the topic in some capacity with the students. So for example, um, in one of my lectures, I use an example that has perinatal mortality as an outcome of interest. And I put a disclaimer at the start of my lecture slides prior to describing the study that it may be a sensitive topic for some, but is an important and needed area of research in public health and medicine. So kind of like what Lucy was saying, kind of um, checking in and, you know, giving maybe like a caution and making them be aware that this topic is sensitive. Um, so then the next question is how can data be approached when it may contain, contain high emotional content? So our second tip is to recognize that some um, uh, profession have to learn to monitor emotions to do the job well. And some of these professions are like medical and health professionals, social workers, pastors, or other clergy. Um, and biostats is no different, um, or even just maybe statistics. Many in our field feel called to help people, animals, environment, et cetera, by using our gifts of being analytical and precise and careful in our work to further research that will improve the world. And this is what keeps pushing us on. So this doesn't mean that that you have to not have emotions. In fact, approaching certain work from a personal perspective can be very valuable. It just means that it's important to have strategies to main, maintain a healthy relationship with emotions when doing research on sensitive topics. And so as Lucy said, this is just a Cliff Notes version of a longer presentation at ECOTS 2020. Um, and in that talk, we also discussed how to engage students with COVID data and how to engage students in a virtual environment. You can find the full recorded version of that presentation in the link that's provided. Um, so thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you. Bye.